In this video, we'll be taking our first proper look at implementing one of the interfaces that we've created previously. So if we go to our BP underscore player class, we're going to flesh out the toggle headpiece function. And by the end of this video, we'll be able to hook this straight up to our widget blueprint and actually start seeing some of the implementation taking place. Just a quick one I do every now and again. If you're enjoying this content or find it useful or any of the above, do consider subscribing to the channel to be kept up to date with any content from any playlist, including this one. And of course, if you already have subscribed, do remember to press the notification bell to actually get your notifications. With that said, we'll move on to our headpiece toggle. First thing we'll do is a quick branch check to see if we are toggling to the next piece. If not, then we're obviously toggling to the previous headpiece. Now, either way, what we want to do is store a type of headpiece. So I'm just going to drag off of here for ease of getting the correct variable type. I'm going to promote this to a variable and I'm going to call this one the store displayed headpiece. And then we can actually delete this and alt drag this back into the scene to set what we're going to be looking at. So this is a headpiece which will be currently displayed in the store. I'm kind of classing the menu as a storefront. And what we want to do is whether this is true or false. So we're just going to make a copy of this. We're going to store the result. We also want to get the current variable. We want to, if we're going for the next headpiece, so we're making an incremental change, we're going to do a enum or a byte plus a byte. So byte plus byte uh, just by one. And we want to check whether or not this is more than three. We know this is kind of hard coded, but we know that we want three because that's the number of points that we have in our enumerator on the basis of zero uh, being counted as well. So zero, one, two, three. So if we hit compile, we do this by a select check. So this kind of automates things for us. And now before we do that, we want to pull off of here and do a conversion to a byte, byte to enum, just so we get this as a numeric value. It's a bit easier to work with. And we're going to pull from this and do a select. Now, depending on what's returned here, so we can plug that into the wildcard, uh, true or false. If this is false, then we can use the current piece of headgear that we're incrementing to. If it's true, then we're going to go back to zero, taking us back to none, uh, because we've just looped through all of the available assets that we have. With all of that set, we then want to actually visualize this. So we want to get our headpiece and we want to set static mesh. We're going to plug that in from here. And again, we're going to do another select. So we're going to select the type of headpiece depending on the store displayed headpiece. So we can plug that in because it already knows that we have four options available. Uh, we'll be auto filled the pins or the values for this. Uh, and quite simply, if we have none, we want to leave this as an empty asset. If we have hair one, then we'll place in hair one, hair two, we'll place in hair two and hats will place in SM underscore hat. So depending on what this is returning, it's now going to select a static mesh and it will set that to be what we're visualizing. And that is pretty much it. So we can plug that into return, place in the stored uh, or the stored displayed headpiece so that the widget knows as well what we'll be using. And we want to do something very similar with this. So I'm just going to copy the select here, plug that into our set here. We just want some slightly different math this time. Now I'm going to purposely make an error here just to kind of uh, make it very easy to see where you can go wrong when you're working with byte values. It's something I got tripped up on and it's just something I figured would be quite helpful to know. So the first thing is we're going to get our store displayed headpiece. We want to do something very similar but because we're going back a piece we're going to do a minus byte. So byte minus byte and you would think what we can do is a very similar check. So we want to see if we're at the lower end of the total available headpieces. So it would say equal to zero or maybe even less than zero. Uh, now either one of these won't work if we're using zero, but I just want to kind of do a quick debug through, show you why, and then show you how to fix it. So again, if you ever see this in the future, rather than just following along here, we kind of know why things didn't work and what the issue is and how you can fix it. If this is true, then we'd want to set this to be the final headpiece again, because again, we're looping back around. This is the bit which is going to be an issue, uh, but when we do fix this, we just want to hook this back up to the set static mesh again, because again, we're setting this value just here. So we can now use the same thing for the headpiece and we can hop back over to our widget class. And what we would expect is for this to work correctly. So if we go to the widgets, widget menu, our graph, we want to bind these to the previous button and the next button. So if we add an on-clicked call to both of these, 
I'm going to get a reference to our player. So get player, uh, get player pawn, uh, player index zero because we only have one player in the world, so that's fine. And again, remember this is an interface call, so we don't need to do any casting. We can just say toggle headpiece. And quite simply, on the previous, I'm just going to move this around actually, so that makes a bit more sense to me. Um, so on previous, we want to make sure that we have next set to false. And if we just make a copy of this, we can place this up here. We'll just plug this in again and we'll make sure that next is set to true. So we're going forward ahead piece. We want to promote this to a variable. We'll be using this a bit later. So promote to variable and call this the player currently selected head piece. And just so this makes sense, this is obviously what is being returned just here, which is why we wanted to return this because we'll be doing some queries on this a little bit later when we update the buy button to find out what they're currently looking at, whether they own it, whether they can afford it and so on. Likewise, we want to plug this in down here when we're going back ahead piece as well. And then we're gonna make a function a bit later to update the select button. But for now, uh, we don't need that. We just want to know whether or not we can toggle this successfully. So we can see if we press next, we're going to head piece one, head piece two uh, and hat and then back to nothing. So that one, works perfectly fine. Now if we go back and we're in range, this is fine. So we can go back and forward for as long as we're in range of zero to three. But as soon as we go past this, you can see I actually clicked twice there and there was no update. So I'm pressing once now, we've gone none. I'm pressing again, we should get the hat. And I'm pressing a third time and we actually get the hat that time. So we're hitting a strange number where this isn't actually doing anything. So what I want to do is I'm going to do a print string here just so we can see what the enum value is getting into because basically enum bytes do not stop at zero. So if we press play again, I'm going to go forward. We're not going to get this on the plus, but that's fine. So if we press back, we get hair one. Uh, if we press back again, we get none. If we do it again, we get e headpiece max, which means we've kind of hit a value which doesn't exist as far as it knows. So if this time we return the value of the byte which is being affected, we can just do a check on this again. So we'll go back, we'll get zero. Go back, we actually get 255. So we can see we've got a bit of an issue here where the bytes go into kind of bizarre ranges and it's up to 255. So what we want to do is we're going to account for that. So we're just gonna plug this back in. And rather than seeing if we are less than a certain number, we quite simply want to see if we are equal to. We're going to, rather than classing zero as the last index, we're gonna see if we are at 255. Then if we are, then we're going to loop straight back around to the third headpiece, which is the hat. If we're not, then we know that this is still going to be correct and we will be seeing the correct, uh, will be on a valid piece of headgear. So we can now go back around. I'll be sure to tell you uh, when I'm pressing the mouse, just so you know that this is working correctly. So we're going to go back to hairpiece one. So I'm now going back again. So we're correctly on the none selection and I'll press once more and we'll get the hat back. Okay, so that all works as expected. Um, as I said, it's a very simple fix. I just didn't want to gloss over that randomly put in equals 255 because I know that would have people wondering why. And there's a very specific reason. And it's just the way that the byte calculation has worked out. So I figured that kind of deserved its own little section rather than just including it because it just works. So that is how we've set up the selection. So this actually now is the first step to having something kind of working. Uh, the next step is gonna be syncing this up to the buy option and having that dynamically changed based on the headpiece that we're looking at. So I'll leave this video here. As always, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around, that always helps. And of course, to be kept up to date with any of the content from any of the playlists on the channel, do consider subscribing and remember to click the bell notification. And as ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.